on this Monday afternoon, September 23rd. It's 65 degrees in Richland Center at 12.09. For WRCO News, I'm Joanne Krulotz. Some spots here in southwestern Wisconsin got more than four inches of rain over the weekend. According to some totals overnight Saturday into Sunday, Sun Prairie got the second highest rainfall in the state at 4.3 inches. Maple Bluff got 4.1 and Cross Plains got 3.8. Here at the WRCO studios, we only received 2100s. A Dane County man died in an accident while riding an electric skateboard. 22-year-old Melvin Hubbard was in Baraboo a couple weeks ago trying out an electric longboard. Baraboo police say he was going 20 to 25 miles per hour when he lost control and his head hit the concrete. In the hospital, doctors found he had no brain activity and he died a few days later. Now his family wants to raise awareness that skateboards can be dangerous. His mother said she had no idea skateboards could go that fast. Vice President Kamala Harris says Republicans are being divisive on purpose in the weeks leading up to the presidential election. At a Friday night rally in Madison, the Democratic presidential candidate said the recent debate with former President Donald Trump showed the divide between the two. Harris and former President Trump would undermine Wisconsin. Harris said former President Trump would undermine Wisconsinites' health care and reproductive health. This was Harris's first visit to Madison and fourth visit to Wisconsin since she got the nomination. Senator Tammy Baldwin made a campaign stop in Richland Center Saturday with just over a month to go before the election. She said every day is important. There is a lot of energy and excitement, and I think people really do understand the stakes in this election. It's up to all of us to traverse the state, as I said earlier, not just blue counties, but purple counties, red counties. Meet people where they are, listen, and show the clear contrast between Kamala Harris and Donald Trump and Tammy Baldwin and Eric Hufty. Pennsylvania Governor Josh Shapiro was on the campaign trail with Baldwin. He says the election will likely come down to three states. My beloved Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, along with Michigan and Wisconsin, and anything I can do to amplify the importance of the stakes of this election, especially in those three states, um, I think is really important. In addition to that, uh, we know that as the Senate races go in Wisconsin, in Pennsylvania with Bob Casey, a great senator who we need to return to the U.S. Senate, that's going to have a lot to do with whether we can pass an agenda that restores a woman's right to choose, that protects our fundamental freedoms. So I think it's really important that we all work together. Governor Evers, Governor Whitmer, and myself have talked a lot about our role in this election. We plan to get on a bus together next month and traverse through these three states again. Uh, and it's really, really important that folks here in Wisconsin understand the real power that they have in this coming election. Baldwin and Shapiro spoke Saturday at the Democratic headquarters in Richland Center. Wisconsin's new Department of Transportation secretary is excited to get to work. Christina Boardman says she wants to continue to share Wisconsin DOT's story so the public understands the work it does. Boardman says she wants to continue to maximize the federal funding opportunities to bring needed resources to Wisconsin. Boardman has nearly three decades of state government service, including 10 years as a legislative aide for the Wisconsin State Assembly before transitioning to Wistot in 2005. The Wisconsin Department of Transportation recently released an online archive of the Wisconsin Aeronautical Chart that highlights the past 56 years of aviation in the state. The first edition of the chart was printed in 1967 for public distribution as an aid to safety and air navigation. The chart now serves as an aid to safety and to promote public use airports and air travel across the state, but is not intended for in-flight navigation. The first chart came out after the 1967 merger of the Aeronautics Commission with the Highway Commission, Department of Motor Vehicles, and State Patrol to form what is now WISDOT. Before 1967, the Aeronautics Commission published the Wisconsin Pilot's Guide, which included an official Wisconsin airport map showing select airports and seaplane bases. Wisconsin's aeronautical chart has been unique for the aviation community as it shows the entire state on one map. 
The current version of the map was rebuilt using geographic information systems, making future updates and data sharing quicker and easier. The chart also provides more details for Wisconsin airports, weather planning, air mileage, flight planning, as well as aviation safety information. Previous editions boast bird's eye views of Wisconsin State Airport facilities and surrounding landscapes and highlights of air travel for business or pleasure. The latest edition includes tourism activities at Wisconsin airports, aviation events, aviation education, safety tips, and other lines of business provided by Wisconsin DOT's Bureau of Aeronautics. Visit WIS.BOA's Wisconsin Aeronautical Chart website to view the online archive or order the current chart. The University of Wisconsin Superior is nearly ready to unveil their floating classroom and research vessel. According to school officials, the project has been in the works for over a year and is now in its final stages before opening its doors for student use. The vessel will be called the Sadie Ann and it will support programs for researchers, university students, and even K-12 students. The floating classroom is currently being built in Louisiana, but will sail up to Lake Superior once it meets Coast Guard requirements. The Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources reminds migratory bird hunters that they are essential partners in preventing the spread of aquatic invasive species in hunting areas in Wisconsin's waterways. The steps hunters take before leaving a boat launch or access point are vital for protecting hunting habitat. Invasives can hide in some of the most unsuspected places. Mud on your anchor can hide seeds, eggs, or the larvae of tiny species, just such as spiny water fleas. Water that collects in boats and decoys can carry diseases and insects. Snails and seeds can also collect under the vest of a hunting dog. Consider giving your dog a rinse with a jug of clean water or scrubbing them off with a brush while they go for a quick swim to prevent invasive species from hitching a ride to the next hunting spot. Of particular concern to hunters is the faucet snail. These snails carry parasites that can kill ducks if they eat them. Learn more about how hunters can help prevent the spread of invasive species and minimize these risks on the DNR's Invasive Species Prevention webpage or by visiting the Hunter Resources tab on the Waterfowl Hunting webpage. Average gas prices rose last week in Wisconsin for the first time in weeks. Gasoline prices have risen 6.5 cents with an average across the state of $3.03 per gallon. This is still 21.3 cents lower than a month ago and over 54 cents per gallon lower than this time last year. Officials at GasBuddy say these increases should be temporary with declines returning in the days and weeks ahead. Vernon County Sheriff Roy Torgerson reports that Saturday afternoon at approximately 2 o'clock, a sheriff's deputy stopped a vehicle on Sugar Grove Road just south of U.S. Highway 14 in the town of Kickapoo, east of Reedstown. As a result of the stop, Christopher Robert Swadley, 45 of Soldiers Grove, was arrested. Swadley was taken into custody pursuant to an arrest warrant for failure to appear an apprehension request for the Wisconsin Department of Corrections, possession of methamphetamine, and operating after revocation. The arrest warrant stems from a December 2022 court filing of possession of a controlled substance, resisting or obstructing an officer, and possession of drug paraphernalia. All as a repeat offender. Swadley failed to appear in court in April 2024, and a warrant was authorized. The apprehension request was issued because Swadley absconded from active community supervision. Formal charges will be sought through the Vernon County District Attorney's Office. Christopher Swadley is expected to appear in Vernon County Circuit Court today. He is also expected to be charged with misdemeanor bail jumping and as a repeat offender. The investigation continues. If you have any information about this crime or any other crime, Call Crime Stoppers at 608-637-TIPS, that's 637-8477, or submit an online tip at p3tips.com. The Lafayette County Sheriff's Office responded to a crash Saturday night in Seymour Township. 
A 12-year-old girl had been traveling at a high rate of speed in a vehicle and lost control before eventually crashing in a ditch. The sheriff's office says the girl was taken to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. The girl was cited for no valid driver's license, no insurance, failure to maintain control, and obstruction. An Ithaca FFA member has won a state proficiency to earn gold at nationals. The 2024 Swine Production Entrepreneurship Proficiency winner is Talina Sprecker of the Ithaca FFA. This proficiency is sponsored by the Wisconsin Pork Association. When Talina joined FFA in 2019, she developed a passion for making an impact on the show pig industry. Talina's thirst for advancement and information led her to travel the nation and meet industry leaders at national conferences and shows. From her conversations, Talina was in was able to implement strong practices on her farm in animal health, nutrition, and breeding. Due to all of her efforts, Talina has been able to develop a herd of premium Poland-China hogs. She even won champion Poland and fourth overall barrel in 2023 at the Wisconsin State Fair. Now Talina hosts show clinics across Wisconsin to help youth find the same success she did. Talina's advisor is Melissa Sprecker. She recently found out that she received a gold rating of Nash at nationals as well. Riverdale FFA's Wyatt Storms placed second in swine production entrepreneurship, and Ithaca's Annabeth Sprecker was third at state in swine production placement. Second Harvest Food Bank of Southern Wisconsin believes everyone deserves access to enough nutritious food to thrive. September is Hunger Action Month. Second Harvest covers 16 counties, including Richland. Michelle Orgay serves as President and Executive Director of the Second Harvest Food Bank of Southern Wisconsin. We work hard to make sure that every one of our 16 counties is getting support it needs. And, uh, you know, I think sometimes folks think of us as being the food bank in Madison, but um, that's just where our headquarters are. And that's, uh, it's a bit of a hub, but we, we have our trucks on the road throughout the week going out to all of our 16 counties and we have folks who are um, who live and work in the communities and in Richland Center who are our um, staff members of Second Harvest who um, who support that community as well it's a it's a really it's a big part of our work. Orge says that diff- during the pandemic there was a lot of visibility of food insecurity however it has increased beyond the pandemic. In Richland County there has been a 44% increase in food that we've distributed over 2022. We've seen this all across our, our service area that need has increased. Um, we have partners throughout our service area who are seeing record numbers each month and it doesn't seem to be going down at all. Some folks are seeing increases in the number of folks they're supporting each month. Some are seeing folks who are coming more frequently. There are folks whose wages just aren't keeping up with the costs that they're seeing and these are hardworking folks who just need a little bit of extra help. Sometimes they need it every now and again and sometimes they need it frequently because they just aren't able to make ends meet. The costs are just too high for them to be able to also afford nutritious food. The increase in the cost of all necessities has led to the increase of those suffering from food insecurity. Orge was asked how they define food insecurity. Hunger is a physical sensation of not having food, but food insecurity is more of a not always knowing where your next meal is coming from. Michelle Orge says that Second Harvest also focuses on nutrition security. Nutrition security is having the security of knowing that you're going to be able to have the types of foods, the nutritious foods, the culturally responsive foods, the foods that are the ones that your family recognizes and are right for your family. Or if you have, you know, medical conditions, there's a lot of different things that go into that. But, but yes, um, having some confidence in knowing that you're going to be able to feed your family. Second Harvest supported families in Richland County in 2023 with 285,048 pounds of food. In our 16 counties, we're supporting 1,300 uh, households per month. It's a lot of folks, and we're not really even getting everyone that is in need. You know, we have, um, there's a lot more folks that we could be supporting, but, you know, resources are always tight, and capacity is an issue, and it can be tough to get all that food out there to folks. 
Second Harvest Food Bank of Southern Wisconsin believes that those who request food support need it. If folks have the money to go to a grocery store, they're going to go to a grocery store. To um, you know, our partners are really, really welcoming. They're really friendly, and they do a really great job. But they have limited hours, limited amounts of food, and they don't always have the types and exact you know quantities and types of food that folks are looking for. They have a lot of great fresh foods and dairy, meat, you know, all sorts of things that folks will be looking for. But there's you know, when when folks go there, they have to go at a certain time, they have to go at a certain day, and so it, it really isn't you know. Folks don't take advantage of pantries. It's a lot of work just to go and and to try to take advantage of of a pantry for not needing it. Second Harvest partners with four programs throughout Richland County. Orge says each partner in the 16 counties run independently as far as requirements or rules for those seeking food. Some partners require living in a certain geographic area or a school district. Some limit the amount of times you can visit to uh, once a month or once a week, or there might be limits on the amount of food you can receive during that visit. Because, uh, And most of these are based on just the amount of food that are available because of the you know, limited supply. The partners in Richland County include the Lone Rock Community, Richland Community, and Viola Kickapoo Area Food Pantries, and the Mobile Food Pantry. The Richland Community Food Pantry, located at 345 Cairns Avenue in Richland Center, is open each Wednesday from 4 to 5.30. The mobile food pantry can be found in Richland Center on the third Thursday of each month at New Hope Church on Fellowship Lane. This week is Operation Safe Stop Week. It seeks to promote school bus safety through education and enforcement efforts. Operation Safe Stop is a cooperative project supported by the Wisconsin State Patrol and Wisconsin School Bus Association. The goal of Operation Safe Stop Week is to proactively educate motorists about the dangers of passing stop school buses. In Wisconsin, there are over 12,000 school buses that transport more than 750,000 students to and from school each school day and travel nearly 70 million miles a year. From this year's survey, an estimated 38% of motor vehicles illegally pass. Wisconsin school buses every day. Commonly, drivers are not fully alert and pass a stop school bus. This is a very dangerous situation for the children, especially the younger ones who may not be watching traffic as closely as they should. Motorists are required to stop at least 20 feet from a stop school bus that is displaying flashing red lights and stop arm. Each time a motorist violates the school bus stop law, he or she creates a real hazard for the students who are boarding or leaving the bus. Wisconsin uses an eight-light school bus warning system. The alternately flashing yellow lights mean caution to other motorists because the bus is preparing to stop. The flashing red lights and stop bar mean stop. The Ithaca School District is seeking to exceed the revenue limit by $1.3 million per year for four years for non-recurring purposes. Voters in the district will be seeing a referendum question on the ballot in November to authorize the request. So residents can understand the question and why the district is seeking to exceed the revenue limit. Informational sessions are being held. The next informational session will be held tonight at 7 at Ithaca Schools. Two additional sessions remain. They are scheduled for Wednesday, October 2nd at 545 at the Ithaca Community Gym and Sunday morning, October 6th at 11.30 at the Willow Valley Church Hall. It's Riverdale Homecoming Week. This year's theme is Night in New York. District-wide dress-up days will be today, Pajama Day, Tuesday, Terrorist Day, or Tourist Day, excuse me. Wednesday is Country versus City Day, Thursday Class Colors Day, and Friday School Spirit Day. There is a full week of activities planned. Today features JV football and junior high volleyball, both at home. Tuesday is volleyball. The high school teams will be at Darlington, and the junior high will be at River Ridge. On Thursday, junior high football will be at Wazika, and junior high and high school cross country will be at Prairie du Chien, and high school volleyball will host Iowa Grant. Also Thursday night will be skit night at the RES building following the volleyball match. On Friday, there will be an all-district assembly at 1 in the Riverdale Elementary Gym. The homecoming parade will step off at 2, and the homecoming football game will be held at 7. On Saturday, the cross-country teams will be on the road at DeSoto. Homecoming festivities will culminate with the homecoming dance Saturday night beginning at 7. 
Homecoming parade entries are being sought. If you would like to enter the parade, contact Tanner Williamson at twilliamson at riverdale.k12.wi.us. It's also River Valley's homecoming week featuring the annual school fair Friday.